Hi, everyone. I thank Professor Prapan and the entire organizing committee for inviting me to do this presentation at this prestigious Bangkok Symposium on the role of integrase inhibitors for first and second line in lower and middle income countries. All of you know that these are the various antiretroviral drugs approved for use in resource limited settings. And we do have older drugs. We have several newer drugs uh, in this uh, list. And I will be talking particularly about this integrase inhibitor and among them particularly more on the usage of daltegravir for uh, first and second line in resource limited uh, settings. These are the two landmark studies, HPT and 052 and the START study completely changed our treatment guidelines, not only in the resource rich settings, but also in the resource limited settings. So what this guideline said is, someone who is HIV positive, irrespective of the start of CD4 on start on antiretroviral therapy. Again, the World Health Organization very clearly recommended two different strategies to start treatment. One is on rapid ART initiation. There is someone who is HIV positive with symptoms, diagnose those opportunistic infection, put them on treatment within a week, start on antiretroviral drugs. Also, the WHO clearly recommended the same day ART strategy. That is someone who is HIV positive, they do not have any symptoms, counsel them and make sure that they can take these medications and start on the same day. When we recommend these uh, guidelines, we need to have a safer drug, which is easy to take by our patients, also been less toxic to them. In the past, you can see these guidelines from recommended from WHO since 2010. We had used variety of uh, ART regimens in the past. Some of those which have been indicated here is being had either had pill burden twice daily, or even if it was beyond once daily, had various different you know, toxicities. In 2016, and following all those various uh, uh, documentations on uh, adverse effects to antiretroviral drugs, Dr. Grove Kandering therapy was being recommended as an alternate regimen. Why it was recommended at that time was this is based on the Rotrox Spectre review of four different NIH-supported ACTG clinical trials. What they did in this study is uh, patients who received antiretroviral therapy using efavirenz regimen were compared with patients who did not receive efavirenz but other ART regimens. So there are several trials being used for the retrospective review. There's one of the study called ACTG 5175 also been carried out in Asia in India, as well as in, you know, in Thailand, in Bangkok, as well as in Chiang Mai. So uh, in this analysis, what's it found that is, uh, participants who received uh, efavirenz containing therapy, they had 2.6 fold high risk of uh, attempted or completed suicide uh, when they have been assigned to efavirenz. So when someone, when you have been recommending to same day ART or rapid ART, when you give such a drug, it's not going to be good for the participants who have been seeking this antiretroviral therapy. And also in the study, very clearly showed that the suicide alertia was much higher, especially in young people, as well as injecting drug use history, as well as with previous uh, psychiatric uh, illness. Also, World Health Organization's uh, uh, documents on uh, the baseline resistance to NNRTA-containing therapy has been rising over a period of time in various resource-limited settings in Africa, as well as in, in Asia and in Latin America, where it has gone beyond, uh, you know, five to 10 percent. So following this, uh, various uh, reports on baseline resistance, World Health Organization very clearly recommended in countries where they have baseline NRTA resistance of 10 percent or more, you should use non-NRTA containing therapy, preferably doctor containing ART regimen for initiating, you know, treatment. Again, why Daltegravir was used is based on the outcome from different clinical trials from single Flamingo and Spring and Sailing. So what's been done in these various clinical trials is Daltegravir containing therapy was been compared against either efavirenz or other integrase inhibitors or other proteus inhibitors. One such study which I'm going to show here is a single trial. So here again, patient initiating therapy. 
where uh, they used uh, effavorance containing therapy was being compared with dot go containing therapy as shown um, you know in these uh, yeah, in a graph the yellow color code is on patients who are on effavorance containing therapy and uh, uh, lighter uh, uh, shaded color is on dot go containing therapy and x axis is duration of weeks in follow and y axis is proportion of the patient who got uh, suppressed viral load of hiv rna less than 50 carbons is very clearly shows that um, dot go containing therapy is been superior to effavorance you know over a period of uh, 96 weeks uh, follow and this efficacy is not only seen in that single trial but also in spring in flamingo and sailing where effavorance was compared against uh, um, you know other integrase inhibitors like raltecrevir and also been um, you know doltegravir has been compared against you know darnavir and flamingo very clearly shows that doltegravir is superior to those uh, regimens also among patients who had been failed um, with these uh, ART regimens and patients who were on doltegravir they did not uh, develop any resistance mutation as compared to non doltegravir containing you know ART regimen when you compare the adverse effects again if you look into this this um, the yellow color bar chart of patients on were on efavorins and the, the other color bar chart is on um, doltegravir is very clearly shows that patients who receive efavorins they have a higher uh, cns toxicity particularly to dizziness and abnormal you know dreams as compared to doltegravir containing therapy and again adverse events uh, to other uh, ART regimens was being compared against doltegravir it very clearly shows that doltegravir is much safer as compared to any other ART regimen for initiating you know treatment so can we give this in tuberculosis if efavirenz can be given in you know tb patients where they have been receiving the famdesin containing therapy so uh, to understand this a very nice clinical trial called inspiring was been carried out um, in patients who had tuberculosis where um, they received different ART regimens one arm received efavirenz containing therapy another one with on doltegravir once daily and and based on the pk interactions between doltegravir famdesin where double the dose of doltegravir is being given in one of those uh, you know uh, participants in this inspiring study this very clearly shows that if you double the dose of doltegravir that is 50 mg twice daily along with the famdesin containing therapy it shows comparable efficacy you know as compared to efavirenz or famdesin and again following the outcome of this inspiring study it's been clearly recommended someone who has got tuberculosis and rifampicin when you have been using doctor containing therapy or double the, the dose of uh, doctor to 50 mg you know and uh, twice daily now following all these uh, various studies uh, who the 2018 very clearly recommended uh, to initiate treatment with a combination of tenofovir with lamivudine or empiricillin with doctor guru that is we call it tld at that time the recommendation for pregnant women was using you know efavirenz containing therapy that's because this because of this large cohort study which was been done in Botswana called sapamo study had shown some signals of doltegravir um, in 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 pregnant women who had received doltegravir containing therapy in the first trimester with some neural tube defects subsequently analysis of the same study very clearly shows that there is no statistical difference between doltegravir containing therapy and as well as any other ART regimen among women who had received ART in the first trimester to neural tube you know defects so following this it's very clearly recommended doltegravir containing therapy for all population to initiate treatment now again among the different integrase inhibitors we have raltecrevir we have elvitegravir we have doltegravir and pictegravir now what specifics in our resource limited settings when we choose a drug it should fit into all population among patients who got tuberculosis or predominant of our patient present to care have tuberculosis should be fitted to you know pregnant women and should be easily taken less toxic and should have less less drug interaction and of course should be available in our own countries if we look into all those um, you know different integrase inhibitors raltecrevir is twice daily elvitegravir is available as a single tablet but it requires to be set to Um, um boost that and it has got a lot of uh, interactions with the drugs dr grover again it's been once daily high genetic barrier few drug interactions can be combined with rifampicin but you have to double the dose is safely given in uh, women of child bearing potential 
It's been co-formulated along the back of 3DC as well as through our uh, uh, generics. Uh, it's also been available as the Tinafu 3DC and Dolteverse TLD. In Big Tech River, again, it's been available as once daily, but again, cannot be given in uh, patients who are taking the famicin containing TB therapy. We do not have enough uh, safety data in pregnancy. Following all these, Dr. is a regimen which can be given in all population to be best recommended in a resource-limited setting among the different integrated inhibitors. Also, our group in collaboration with CPEC and Harvard had done a cost-effective analysis and how cost-effective to use the Dr. Good resource-limited settings as compared to uh, the, the really regimens like efavirenz. And we found that if you factor in all the adverse effects and discontinuation following efavirenz and following that developing resistance, Again, Dolteguer containing therapy has been very cost effective in a resource limited settings. Now, we do have generic Tinofo, let me be in as a single fixed dose combination being available from you know, several uh, international you know, pharmaceutical companies, being available as a single tablet. Also, our group here in Chennai have already evaluated these generic um, you know, TLD combination and it's been very clearly shown that. It has been safe, it's been tolerable, and it also been have comparable efficacy in a, a large cohort of patients of over uh, six months uh, clinical follow. Now, following these uh, reports, uh, WHO started recommending um, in their uh, guidelines, and as well as many uh, country programs started adapting the guidelines, and the scaling up of uh, doctor work happened across different continents. In 2017 to 2018, uh, around 50% of uh, uh, patients uh, across uh, different lower and middle income countries are receiving doctor containing therapy. Now, till uh, 2021, now almost 90% of the patients who are receiving antiretroviral drug in lower and middle income country have been using doctor containing therapy and it's been widely been recommended across uh, different you know, uh, national guidelines in lower and middle income you know, countries. What about in second line? Now we know that very well that it's been recommended through the first line in, in the WHO guideline, as well as in the other resource limited setting guidelines. What about in second line? So whether can we give this Dolphic River uh, in second line along with the two NRTIs when someone being failed with an NRTI containing therapy? It's a very nice study called Dawning study. So which recruited uh, 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 participants who had failed in NRTI containing therapy and they are randomized into two different groups. One group received two NRTIs with Dolt River, another one is a standard WHO earlier recommended regimen of two NRTIs with the Lopinavir. The study was well conducted uh, you know, across uh, 300 uh, participants in each arm and over a period of 52 weeks. And it very clearly shows that participants who are on uh, Dolt River containing therapy, as shown in this blue color bar, it's been superior uh, in terms of virological suppression as compared to both uh, you know, containing you know, therapy. And following this is very clearly shown that uh, Dolteo containing therapy um, for second line has been superior as compared to the earlier standard of care with the lopinavir containing therapy among patients uh, who have had uh, failed uh, in an RTI as a first line therapy. What about uh, Tinafo, which we use in the first line? Can we recycle, you know, for second line along with the Dalton River? So this is a large cohort study uh, which uh, happened across the different continents in Europe, Latin America, North America, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Asia. In Asia, we had both India and uh, uh, Thailand, being, you know, sites where uh, any patient who had failed to offer if they had a resistance mutations, and those uh, data have been um, submitted to this large database called Tinovus uh, database. But it's been clearly shown that in Sub-Saharan Africa, patients who have been failing tenofovir containing therapy, 57% of them had tenofovir resistance. And in Asia, where it's around the 39%. So that means someone who is failing tenofovir in first line, they can have anything from 39% to 50% resistance either in Asia or in, in Africa. So following that, uh, WHO recommends someone who is failing TLE, tenofovir efavirenz you switch them to optimized uh, sec uh, second line ART, that is uh, uh, change from tenofovir lemivudine to AZT3DC and from in an RTI favorance to Dr. Uh, containing therapy. And this recommendation was done because 
there are studies done using dolutegravir monotherapy which shows that which is not been you know efficacious so if you switch to the same regimen there is a possibility of dolutegravir you know monotherapy following this recommendation was done also um, now there are uh, various uh, randomized clinical trials been ongoing um, to to trying to understand whether switching from TLE to TLB can be a good option as compared to the earlier uh, recommended uh, recommendation of uh, protease inhibitors with an RTI and also with a new regimen of daltegravir and uh, and daranavir without any you know, NRTI. We need to wait for uh, these results. Uh, in the meantime, the question started coming up, can we recycle tenofovir in the public health setting? That is from changing from TAE to you know, TLT. Very nice study uh, conducted in Africa, in Kenya, Uganda, and Zimbabwe, on a, a 464 uh, patients who had a viral load of more than 1,000 copies following in an RTA containing therapy. And they were randomized uh, first to switch to either Daltgrower or Darren over 800 milligram, return over 100 milligram. Then in a second randomization to either to retain or turn off of it or switch to, you know, Sidovidin. Is to answer the question, critical question, can we recycle tenofovir from first line to the second line? So in this uh, particular study, which got published, has uh, shown that 58.5% uh, of those uh, study participants had intermediate or high-level resistance to tenofovir at the time of, uh, you know, switch. And in the outcome at 48 weeks, it's been found that 90% of those patients are daltel containing arm and 91.7% in the Darnor arm had viral load less than 400 copies. That means both Daltegravir and Darnor is being has been equally efficacious as part of those uh, second line for among patients who have been failed in an RTA containing therapy. And also, there is no statistical significance has been seen in terms of virological outcome according to the NRT randomization, which again they found that. 92.3% of those participants in the Tenofovir group and 89.6% in the ACT group had viral load less than 400 copies, and there was no difference in terms of rate of virological rebound, about 1,000 copies. So this Nadia study very clearly support the WHO recommendation of switch to Daltegravir uh, for second line when uh, uh, someone who has been failing you know, in an RTA therapy. And also this study also stated that a combination of Darno 800 and Bruton over 100 milligram is a robust alternate to Daltegravir in second line uh, treatment, giving an excellent viral suppression. Also, this study very interestingly showed uh, tenofovir and lemividin can be recycled in second line treatment, even in people with drug resistant mutations. So that means you can switch from TLE to TLD, as shown you know, in this table. That means someone who is failing TLE you can change them to TLD, and thereby this uh, Dalton work can be a universal, you know, regimen for first line and second line, and you can recycle Chinoco based on this Nadia study. And one of the very important facts for regarding Dalton work, particularly for a systematic setting, is if you look into this single trial, if you look into those virological suppression, and participants who are on Dalton containing therapy they had a much earlier virological suppression as compared to efavirenz. This will definitely will have a huge impact on the uh, transmission prevention, which we have seen in HPT and 2 study, less of the viral load, lesser chance of you know, HIV transmission. Hence, in developing countries, I mean, introducing daltegravir will have, not only have a huge individual benefit, but also it can have a prevention effect on this. But after seeing all those integrase inhibitors getting scaled up uh, across uh, you know, uh, different uh, lower and mid-income countries, one of those issues being faced in certain regions is on weight gain using integrase uh, inhibitor. Now, this was very clearly shown in one of those uh, clinical trials uh, which was carried out uh, in Sub-Saharan Africa called Advanced Study, which was a three-arm study, which um, uh, compared uh, Tenofovir FTC, Daltegravir, and TAF FTC, Daltegravir against uh, Tenofovir FTC and Ifavirenz. So, in that particular clinical trial, 
which happened over a period of uh, one and two weeks follow-up, very clearly shows a comparable virological suppression among all the three arms. When they looked into the sub-analysis on the weight gain, and if you look into those, uh, uh, this slide on the left side panel, among men, uh, among participants who are on TAF and FTC and Doltegravir, they have a higher uh, um, weight gain as compared to tenofovir, FTC and Doltegravir as compared to tenofovir, FTC and Efavirenz. On the right side panel of this uh, uh, slide, this is among uh, uh, weight gain among women, if you look at it, there is a huge weight gain being seen in the Dolgroam, particularly when it is compared with the TAF, as compared to tenofovir FTC and Doltegravir versus tenofovir FTC and Efavirenz. This very clearly shows that in women race, particularly in African women, there is a huge weight gain when in Dolgroam is combined with the TAF. This very clearly calls for much larger studies, whether it is race specific or when it is in combined in combination with the in a tab. We looked into that into our cohort in Chennai among uh, the patients who are initiating uh, Doltegra containing therapy when we compared with the favorites. We found uh, there is a statistical increase in weight gain and over a period of up to 12 months, then subsequently that significance was not seen. And also when they looked into the BMI at six months uh, following TLB, Dr. Dover, we could see this BMI gain um, uh, and over a period of time, that significance was uh, not being you know, seen. And again, in the resource-limited setting, we have seen in the past, when you put anyone on antiretroviral therapy, we have seen weight gain. Either it goes to the earlier regimen of nivirapine or the favorance of hugely with the uh, Dr. Trevor. And again, the question is whether this weight gain will lead to another you know, comorbidity. This is something will be a major research question, particularly in our region in Asia. This is a very nice uh, analysis, uh, uh, pooled analysis of weight gain among uh, participants who have received different reactive regimen, uh, different uh, you know, uh, phase three trials. You know, this very clearly shows that the weight gain was seen, particularly among uh, you know, black females um, uh, with the different uh, you know, regimens. This is something really calls for whether this weight gain is, uh, is race specific, particularly in the context of Delta Grevier, I think which should be you know, answered with the cohort study followed by some you know, pathogenesis studies to prove this. Uh, now coming to this uh, COVID and uh, uh, HIV in the context of uh, Delta Grevier, we looked into um, in a, um, a review, literature review of all those published literature on patients uh, who had been diagnosed with COVID with HIV um, with various ERT regimens. And we found that there's no difference in terms of uh, acquisition of uh, COVID and the usage of uh, you know, ERT regimen. In our cohort in Chennai, um, you know, among uh, 140 patients who are diagnosed with HIV and COVID out of those 4,300 who's been seen in the clinic since this uh, pandemic, 92% uh, uh, of them were on uh, uh, Doltegra containing therapy with tenofovir lenivudine as a background. We found that no antiretroviral prevented COVID. So that means TLD combination did not have any prevention effect for uh, you know, COVID among uh, people living with HIV and were on antiretroviral therapy. And patients, again, uh, who are on uh, control HIV with CD4, they did the same like uh, any other person who did not have HIV and had uh, you know, COVID. And there is no difference in disease progression as compared to non HIV is seen in our, in our Chennai in a cohort. So in summary, the combination of tenofovir, lemividine, and doltegravir may achieve a, a, a goal of pill burden, high barrier to resistance and activity, a prior uh, in an arterial resistance in HIV. And people doing well on current therapy clearly will have a role since less toxic, more convenient, and offer greater flexibility. And again, in our region, in Asia, we need implementation science studies as TLB is being getting rolled up. We need to collect data on safety during pregnancy, and we need data on weight gain in our Asian region, and as well as long-term safety of a combination of tenofovir, lemividine, and doltegravir. As many of you know that, now someone who has been suppressed 
Tenofovir on a long run can be renal toxic as well as bone toxic. There are various studies being done. Now, can we drop Tenofovir when someone has been suppressed? There are various uh, two drug uh, trials uh, being carried out and some of them had been being used in the surgical settings as a strategy to prevent certain side effects. This study called Gemini study, where uh, uh, you know, two drug combination of Daltegravir and Lemivudine was being compared with Tenofovir, FTC and Daltegravir, and very clearly showed that over 48 weeks, it's been totally been non-inferior. So following this, uh, USFDA approved this combination of Lemivudine and Daltegravir as Devato, but it's not recommended in hepatitis B for mono-infected, hepatitis co-infected patients. And also emergence of drug resistance has been reported. And we need more data, particularly in TB patients, uh, whether how we can uh, double the dose uh, without Tenofovir. And again, uh, uh, a study on SWAD uh, study where they used a uh, two-drug combination of Daltegravir and Vilpivirin, particularly in patients who had been had a suppressed viral load where uh, Tenofovir had been dropped and compared with continuing Tenofovir over a period of time, and they found that there is no difference in terms of virological efficacy over 48. Again, the sub-analysis of this study very clearly shows that patients uh, who had continued uh, Tenofovir-based therapy had more uh, bone mineral density loss as compared to uh, participants who had dropped Tenofovir and continued just two drug therapy, Dolpivirin and Daltegravir. This very clearly shows that Daltegravir can be used as a strategy to prevent toxicities as a two-drug uh, uh, regimen um, um, in different um, you know, settings. Will this will have a role in a developing country? Now, Daltegravir will be approved as a pill called Diluca. Um, of course, this can be used in patients, even in resource-limited settings, who are virologically suppressed with no prior LNRT or uh, integrase resistance and with no concomitant uh, uh, rifampicin and hepatitis B for infections, particularly useful in uh, patients who have got moderate severe renal impairment or osteoporotic and uh, you know, you know, CVD um, risk. Also, I'd like to end uh, my presentation by showing that now among patients who have got suppress viral load, now we have a new tool using this long-acting injectable. So now it has been uh, 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 approved as Cabinuva, a combination of cabotegravir and rilpivirin. We know that cabotegravir has been uh, is a uh, analog of adultegravir, it's an integrase inhibitor available both as an oral tablet as well as as a long-acting injectable half life up to 40 days. Rilpivirin is an NNRTI available both as an oral tablet as well as an injectable with a half life up to 90 days. So these two drugs been combined together as a two different injections and it's been shown in lactate 2 study that it's been comparable as compared to oral therapy, either as a every four week injections or every eight week injections. Atlas and FLAIR, these are the two trials very clearly showed that monthly injections with the cabotegravir and rilpivirin among patients who got suppress viral load who had um, um, uh, oral lead dose uh, with uh, the cabotegravir and rilpivirin and followed by every four weeks of uh, injectable capital in the brain have shown excellent efficacy over a period of time. So currently, this uh, long-acting injectable is not available in resource-limited sitting, should be available anytime soon, which will be a big boon uh, to our patients who have issues with, uh, you know, adherence that you have to look for this uh, drug sometime soon in your countries. I'd like to end my presentation stating that our future treatment management strategies will be how we can reduce a drug dose, how we can use certain new investigational drugs, also how we can use a certain long-acting drugs in our antiretroviral therapeutic uh, regimens. Again, thank you for this opportunity. Happy to take uh, any types of questions. And again, thank the organizers for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Stay safe.